quite sure you are aware that I am not Fitz Jackson. <laughs> um, quite a bit is overseas, and so I was asked to bring the remarks this afternoon. Um, just this week, I was told about this meeting, and um, I did my research on the Habitat for Humanity International. And I recognize that they chose three communities, Burger Park, New Orleans, and Navarre. And as the newest councillor in Jamaica, the newest councillor in Portmore, I was really embraced that Navarre was chosen. And I want to iterate what Pastor said. What about old communities? Right? And so when I came and got that brief overview, about the skills training that you people receive and the skills that are out there that was built by you. I said, top to the association that we it for. Now this afternoon is about land tenure, ownership. And I can tell you that owning a piece of asset, as the slogan said, improve your land status. It can only make your life better when you have a piece of asset. With that asset, you can always negotiate. All of us need loans to improve our standard of living. And so this afternoon session, I think, is one of the critical aspects going forward in making your life better. And so it is indeed my pleasure to welcome all of you here to make the lives of the residents of Nagoya better. And I can pledge on behalf of the Member of Parliament that whatever is called upon us as elected representatives to assist in making your lives better, we will certainly be on board. So thanks for coming and hope you take something from this. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And I am so happy to see so many people out this evening. I am so proud of Nago Head. And I tell everybody I'm a citizen of Nago Head. Anybody agree? Yes. Alright. And Nago Head will come from. Alright. So I just want to share with you a little bit about the Brace project. Um, and in particular, Brace 2. We, as the councillor mentioned, we started in three communities in Portmore, Gregory Park, Newlands, and Nago Head. And we were very um, insistent upon building capacities in communities. That is why the project is called Building Resilience and Capacities for Emerging Disasters. And what we've done in the communities is that we've trained a number of community members to be the persons who will drive the change and who will build that kind of resilience in communities. So we trade plumbers, we trade the masons, we trade carpenters. The skits that you see, the retrofits and repairs that are happening in homes, the toilets that are being built, are being built by community members who were trained and some of them certified. So in Nago Head, you have trained and certified builders because of the BRACE project. And we want to say thanks to those who have committed themselves to this training. Give them a clap, clap. <laughs> but we understand and appreciate that it's in, in addition to building capacities, we have to have the governance structure in place. And so we have now a local Nago Head Citizens Association, and they are going to help to drive the redevelopment in the community which takes us now to brace two because building toilets retrofitting homes um giving skills we realize that those are important but there is a major hindrance to the redevelopment of the community we realize that people do not have the not just the impetus but they do not have the capital to help drive some of those change because they're not bankable and to make people bankable is to give them good tenure. Put titles in people's hands, right? That they can take to the bank. So, Grace 2 was born, land tenure. And we decided that we got to choose one community to do this. Four 
unfortunately, the community that we're going to be beginning is Nago Head. And the success of this program and this project depends on the participation of each community member. What did I say? So yes, right, it depends on your participation. Habitat is not here to do the work. Habitat is here to say, here's an opportunity. Do you want it? And you say yes, and you take it and you run with it. So what is it that we're going to do in this in this project? We are going to map 500 households or so. Right? And you would have noticed that there have been community members coming door to door asking you your business. It's not because they're fast. It's because they're looking for the information to help drive the process. So the first round of this uh, of, of investigation was to look at your house, look at how your plot size is, draw that, see if it adds up to what is on the map and all of that. What we're going to be doing next is that we're going to be coming, the land surveyor is going to be coming now and he's going to be measuring up all those things and you're doing boundaries so you can get a plan and all of that. Then you're going to have some students and community members coming in now to ask you questions. Why are they asking you these questions? Because we have a vision for Nago here. And the campaign that we're launching is called Reimagine Nago here. And I want you to indulge me for just for five seconds. Close your eyes a bit. Close your eyes a bit, no man. You go to Farry, and you spend 25 years in a Farry, and you're coming back to Nago Head, and you want to see Nago Head developed. Imagine what Nago Head looks like. Imagine the changes. Open your eyes now. Right? That is what the campaign is called. Reimagine that way. So the changes that you see is the changes that we want. And the community members that participated in this vision and exercise said that they want to see wider lanes. Anybody here wants to see that same thing? Yes. yes. They said they want to see better houses. Yes. Anybody want to see? Yes. They said they want to see play areas for children. Anybody? Yes. They said they want to see um, sidewalks. Yes. They said they want to see better drainage. Yes. They said they want to see water in every home. Yes. They said they want to see parks. Yes. Health center. Yes. Proper toilet facility. Yes. All right. So all of them, you, you, you are imagining with me. Very good. So all of the questions that they were going to be asking you on that forum, it may take a little bit more than five minutes of your time, but it's the help to put that plan into action. So that we know, okay, this is what you want, this is where we want it, then kind of thing is so. This is the kind of jobs that we want available in the community. This is the kind of training that we want for our young people. So all of that will be on the questionnaire. So 500 households, they'll be coming around and they'll be doing all of that in the community. So this is, a, you would have seen these people walking around in their community, they will be doing that and you're going to be seeing more. We're going to be flooding the community because we want the information, we want to start the work, we want the change to happen. Nago Head deserves the change. Yeah. We want Nago Head to be the place where people want to work, yeah. live, do business, raise families. And I asked Miss Dobbins already to send me this land. Because we want to build my home right here in Nago Head. So that is the vision that we're selling, right? And we want to engage community members in creating an up to date spatial map of parcel size and a number of households as it appears. So that the government agencies would have an up to date map but also so that we can have the information to plan the vision. And, and you see how they were, they were involved in the whole process. Participants got the training. So you have some people here now who know how to go out and draw people house and all that kind of things. They know, they know how to do that. And when they go the um, Mr. Surveyor Man, then we understand they know how to peg and all that sort of thing. I don't know nothing about pegging. All I know is to do is chat. 
Next slide. We have engaged the community too in training in advocacy. Advocacy. Because every now and again you hear PEC people block road say they want justice. Not true. And we want water and we want proper road and we want drainage and we want this. So we understand that for this vision to come into fruition, we need advocates. We need people who will be able to speak for the community, who will be able to stand and speak to the powers that be. So we train them in advocacy. Not just to speak to you, but to go and sit down in high, 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 high places and talk. Not true. Oh, yeah, yeah. And to say, we want change and we have the numbers. So we want you to give them your support. Right? Because they will be coming to you say, sign this petition here because we want the change. We're going for the change. I want you to sign say, yes, ma'am, we support you. So when we go to the elected official, we're not throwing no words for the councillor. <laughs> when we go to the elected officials and we say, see the names them here? The people want the change. What they have to do? They have to make the change because there's power in voice. People power, not true. Yeah. Right. So we train them in advocacy. We also looked at what were the problems in Nagohe and how it is that we're going to fix it. That is what this project is going to do. We want to fix some of those problems. We looked and we see that um, we had some problems of teenage pregnancy, poor nutrition, all of those kinds of things, inadequate housing. We saw those as problems. And we looked at how it is that we're going to fix it. One of the ways that we're going to begin is through tenureship. But we need partnerships. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, you see these people up here. Because Habitat couldn't do it alone. We needed the politicians. Portmore Municipal Council, the MP who has been on board from the beginning. The new council is here. LAMP is here. We have a legal expert here to help you understand what your rights and responsibilities are. We have people here to help guide you through the process. Who would partner with you. So we need your cooperation, we need your help, but we also need your voice. Alright? So that is what we're really about. And we want you to spread the word. Spread it like it's a nice piece of sauce. You know when you get a good piece of sauce? When you get a juicy piece of sauce? Spread this because this is good news. Good, good, good news to spread. And we want you to share that. We want you to tell people that big things are going for now, ahead, that there is a vision of redevelopment and it is called reimagine Nagoya. What is it called? Reimagine Nagoya. No, say it like you believe it. Reimagine And what we got to have? What are some of the things we got to have in this new Nagoya? Wider lanes. Wider lanes. Parks. Parks. Sidewalks. Sidewalks. Better drainage. Better drainage. Better tidage. Better tidage. Better tidage. Right. Lower crime. All of them something they we got to have. Right? But we need you. Thank you for coming out again. And we really do appreciate you. And I turn you to the people who know what I'm talking about to talk to you right now. So without further ado, what I'll do now, I'll hand right over to the land lawyer. We'll talk to you more about the documents that you need to have to get secure land in. All right? So thank you guys for listening. And Ms. Delrose Campbell will take it from here. Hello, everybody. Hello. It is my greatest pleasure to be here and I feel very comfortable and very at home because I have worked with other communities across the island that sought to do exactly what it is that you are doing. I have worked on other land titling projects, tenure projects, and I have seen the difference that it can make to individuals and to families. I've seen it. Now I'm going to start by telling you about my own, for own personal experience. In 1988, as a young woman, I was renting a little place. And what came? 
Hurricane Gilbert. Who remembers that? Yes. And somehow my little place was untouched. But where my landlord lived with his entire family, his mother, his father, his wife, and children, their entire roof came off and they were left out and exposed. So guess what they did? They came and tell me I need to leave by two days, in two days time. I guess they thought I was a smaller one person. It would be easier for me to go and catch somewhere else. While I was trying to figure out how will all of them fit into this little place that I was renting. But somehow they did. And that really taught me something. I'm going to tell you what it taught me. One, I swear another landlord won't tell me to leave again. And that gave me the drive and the determination to start my saving to ensure that I buy my own little place. It also taught me that when you have something that you can hold up, you are powerful. Yes. You have all the talk. Yes. 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 I'm going to tell you another little story before I go into the teaching session. I am here to teach you a little bit about land tenure ownership, title, and so on. But I'll tell you another little story. There was a DJ, I won't call his name because you might know him. He was very, very, very popular in the 90s. Very, when I say popular, he's not popular right now, but he was. And he was making a whole heap of money. An older man who knew him said to him, you need to own a little place of your own. You can't just be spending, spending all your money just like on cars and bling and girls and so on. And sent him to see me. He identified a nice house which he could afford because he, had, he was cashing. And do you know that the man from whom he would buy all these jewelry, and he shall remain nameless, the jeweler. The jewelry was encrusted with diamonds and, and thick diamond bracelets and so on. Told him, do not go buy no, no house. He came and he told me that. He was conflicted. I said, why did he tell you not to go and buy a house? He said, listen, you're a DJ when you're out the street. You feel look like DJ. Nobody don't know where you live. They not come walk up, see where you live. But they see you out the street. They see what you drive. And I had a hard time convincing him that it was going to be worth his while to buy this house. He went back and forth until eventually he did. And the way this music industry is a little strange, not everybody is able to stay up on the top and to sustain it. And I was surprised when one day, maybe about 10 years later, or longer later, he showed up at my office and he said, Miss B, are you me going to tank, you know? Because, you see, me out of the business, but me have my title, and me use it. I may borrow a little money, I may roll on a different ends, may I do one little different business now, I'm in a wholesale. And I was pleased. I was happy that I was able to influence him because if he had not gone that way, when the music and the career flop, he would have had nothing to turn back to. Now, it is everybody's dream to be secure on a piece of the rock, yes. some little piece of the land, yes? And some will own, some might not be able to own right now. But it is always a dream that you can transition, you can change from your current status of leasing or renting to move on. 
but we always make sure that wherever we are, whether we are owner or whether we are tenant, leasing, we have what it takes to prove that we have the right to be there. You with me? Yes. yes. So I'm going to teach you a little thing or two now. In Jamaica, we have two different types of ownership title. When you hear the word title to land or title to property, we're talking about everything that is on the land. Fruit trees, if it's fruit trees, buildings, if it's building, house, if it's house, shop, if it's shop. So sometimes I say land, I mean everything that is on it. You with me? Yeah. Yes. So land means land and anything that is on it. So there are two types of title to land in Jamaica. The old time type that we call common law. Anybody ever hear of common law title? Yeah. Yes. That is more the old time type. Nothing really wrong with it because you can hold it up as proof of your ownership. But it is not the absolute best type of title. Usually, your common law title could be made up by a lawyer but that, or by somebody in the community write it up for you. Now, those kinds of titles are usually used when the land is not a registered piece of land. And when we say registered, what we mean? Registered at the title's office in Kingston. Yes? No. So the second type of title, which is a better type of title, proof of ownership, that the bank want to see, that housing trust want to see, Students loan bureau want to see, credit union. credit union want to see, the better type is what we call the registered title. And when you see that title, you know it's special because guess what? It has the coat of arms at the top of it. Anybody ever seen it? Yes. yes. And for those who have never seen it, I walked with one just to show you. Don't know if you can see it from there. Yeah. It's a look, a, a paper that is a kind of dirty white, yeah. off white. Yeah. And if you have it too long, it starts to look even gray brown. Yes. yes. And it has the coat of arms at the top. And to the side of it, it has a number, the volume and the folio. Now this one I have here in my hand is what we call, they call it, duplicate certificate of title but you don't worry yourself about that once you have it in your hand you call it your title but why do they call it the duplicate because the original is kept by the registrar of titles at Hanover Street the original is kept there and the landowner receives the duplicate certificate of title I'm going to tell you something else about this title. This title is what you call government backed. Government backed. What else you know is government backed? Your, your money, if you, once you take up your hundred dollar, nobody can tell you that it's worth less because the government has guaranteed that anywhere you take that hundred dollar bill or your five hundred or your five thousand dollar bill, you can spend it. Now this, when you have this, no man, nobody can touch your rights. Once you step up into the court of law and you hold up your title, the judge says case done. Right? Unless you obtain this by fraud. I'm going to talk about the ownership first. And then we're going to talk about the leases after, okay? All right. So when you go to get title, you have to be able to show how you say you come to own the land. Yes? And there are three main ways you can come to own land. And there's a fourth way that I will go into after. So... 
The first way is by purchase. That's the main way most people come to own land. By purchase. And if you're stepping up to say you purchase the land, what you're going to have to have to show? You have to have some proof. Some proof in paper that you purchased it. So put yourselves in a position. Start getting your paperwork together. If you did have purchased land, you're not at the stage where you have the superior kind of title. Make sure you look for, find, and secure, and put up your receipts, your proof of purchase. Because word of mouth cannot, cannot work. It has to be on paper. The next thing is, whoever you buying the land from or you bought it from, must have a right to sell you. Yes? So you have to guarantee yourself, assure yourself, make sure you find out that whoever you paid your money to or paying your money over to when you are buying land, is their own. Okay? That they can really sell it. Now, the best way to assure yourself about ownerships and things like that is to get the help of a lawyer. And I know lawyers are expensive, can be very expensive, but there are ways and means of getting to the information. But you understand what I'm saying about the purchase. So look for, put up, you're going to need your purchase receipt and your proof. Now, the second way of getting land is by, she said, will. That's another way, inheritance. By inheritance. If you get land by inheritance, through a will, secure your will, put it up, please, because there's a process that must take place with that will to lead to your getting a title. Probate. I have a little lawyer sitting down up here. She's telling me everything I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, she studied law. Excellent. So, there's probate of the will. Don't worry yourself about that process yet. Because a gentleman who is going to come and speak to you later on will tell you how all of those services can be accessed to probate the will and so on. But I'm saying to you, if you inherited under a will, make sure you have your will. So when you look at a will for it to be valid, it needs to have three signatures, the dead person and the two witnesses. So check to be sure that you, you have corrected wills or if you're willing something to someone that it is done in that way. You don't need a lawyer to do a will, but it's a good thing to have, but you don't have to. The first thing I learned in law school is that you can make a will on a brown paper bag. Yes? Once the three elements are there, it's signed by the dead person, it is dated, and it is witnessed by two persons. You can say, when I die, I give my house and land at Nagahead to my daughter. You sign it, you date it, and two witnesses sign it. And that's a will. Simple? Yes. That is good enough. Now there's another way you can inherit. No, a JP doesn't have to stamp it. The next thing I need to tell you quickly about the will is that Glad you asked that question, the JP does not have to stamp it. The two persons who are witnessing the will must be there, the two of them at the same time, because each one is a witness to the other. So all three persons must sign at one time. Wills have come up where you discover and you don't have a problem with a will until somebody comes and says, it wasn't him to get it, it was me. And then you start to, then the whole investigation and the trials and tribulations start. And if you find 
that Mr. Brown signed his will. Then he carried the, the, the signed will to church and asked Sister Blake to sign it. And then he put it back in his pocket. And then when he went to home the evening, he walked down the road and asked somebody else to do the other signature. And the will comes, have all three signatures. The will is invalid. Why? Because the three people were not there to watch each other sign the will. You learned something today? Yes. Don't forget that. So, that is the will. The other way you can inherit is if there's no will, but because of your relationship to the person who has died leaving the land, you could inherit by law. So no will, you're going to inherit by law. How you inherit by law? If someone dies leaving no will, you have to administer on the estate. In the country, when I was growing up, I used to hear about administrate, administrate. It is called administ letters of administration. Now, who can go and administrate? Who can apply? It can be if the person dies leaving a wife and no children, the wife alone. If the person dies leaving a wife and children, then everybody, wife and children, everybody entitled. It's like he willed it to all of you. If you die and you have no wife and no children, then parents, go back up to your parents. If you die and you have no Wife, no children, no parents, then is it brothers and sisters? Asking me about outside children, there's nothing named outside children anymore where the law is concerned. We fixed that up a long, long time. Right? The boss had not there again. Right. So all children, all persons who can prove that the dead person was indeed their father would be entitled. So that covers inheritance. So can I just ask one quick question um, as it relates to brothers and sisters. Is there a gender issue or an age issue? No, he's asking as it relates to brothers and sisters. When it comes to brothers and sisters, is the all of the full brothers and sisters first, right? All the full first and then the half after. But as it relates to the parents, you don't have no half child. There's no, no child is split in half. Okay? Yes. And then all the people on the same level equal, equally entitled. All the brothers and all the sisters. So, we can come to ownership of land by by it, by inheritance, or by third thing, a gift, a gift, a gift. I can give you land as a gift. You give it to your children, you give it to your sweetheart, you give it to your husband, you give it to your church, you give it to your pastor. You can give land as a gift, but you can't say you're giving it. It has to be in writing. Now, if the land has a title like this kind of title, to change the ownership, to pass the title over, there are special ways and forms at the title's office to do it. Okay? Yes. If the land doesn't have a title like that, you can Write it as a gift. Just say, I give my land at so and so, and you describe it all properly as a gift to so and so, and that has to be witnessed by a JP and dated. That is called, they call it a deed of gift. It can be done fancily by a lawyer, but amongst yourself, if the land doesn't have a title like that one, 
you can do up your own gift paper. But if it has a title like that one, the gift paper don't work. It has to be a special form. You with me? Yes. Now, the fourth way which a lot of people are interested in is what we call title by possession. Title by possession. What do you think I'm talking about? Anybody have any clue when I say title by possession? Mm, you're in possession of the land. You can apply for a title. If your title is like, if the title to the land is like this, you might not have it. But you have been in possession of the land, undisturbed and unmolested. Nobody come to claim ownership of it. And 12 years pass, you can go for your title by what is called adverse possession. Big word. Title by possession. That is what we call in Jamaica squatter's rights or squatter's law. If you have a title like this, if the land, I should say, because you might have it, but somebody before you had this. So this way is a little bit more complicated. And you need to find a lawyer or you'll hear about the other resource coming up, LAMP that can help you to go through the, the evidence and the information to see if you qualify for a title by possession. Now, to claim that title, you have to show that you never get no permission to go on the land, nobody collecting any rent from you, and you nobody come and ask you to come on the land. Four. Here. Um, title by possession. Yes. All right. So nobody pays. You don't say nobody comes in the rent. So when you go to the tax office. All right. I'm going to get to the tax soon. Wait. Hold on on the tax. Everybody right. loves to talk about tax. Yeah. And property tax. I'm getting to that. Okay. All right. So. How are my students doing so far? Are we learning the law? Yes. All right. So we now know that when the time comes for us to step up in Nagohead to obtaining our title, we know the ways through which we can obtain that title with the code of arms. We do? Yes. yes. Now, there are some, what I call them, hocus pocus stories that have been going around in Jamaica for years and years and years, so much so that people believe them to be true and believe them to be law about how you can come to own land. I told you the ways already. Yes? This story about if you pay property tax and if you pay it up, for how long you can own the land, that is not so. Are we learning anything in Nagahead yes. this evening? Yes. That is not so. If I stay in Kingston and pay for the whole of Westmoreland, I have no land down there. It is possession. It just happens to be the case that the law says they're not issuing any title for any land that owe taxes on it. So, if the true owner stays in England and somehow pay the taxes for the last 30 years and you are in possession, you don't know who this owner is, undisturbed, unmolested, nobody come to tell you to come off the land. Nobody come to say, pay me rent for the 12 years for the registered, that registered title there. All you have to do is you can tiptoe down to the tax office to check to see if the tax is paid. If it is paid, all the better. If it is not paid, 
you can pay up the last seven years and you are fine. Because all the government, the authorities, the titles of this need to know is that the land, no, no taxes owed on the land. So you understand when people telling you, oh, pay the taxes and that's enough. It's not enough. That is not what gives you any rights. Taxes is just revenue. That is just money for the government, for, sorry, the municipality to take care of the roads and the infrastructure in the community. So we are to pay it. But it doesn't give you any rights to any ownership. I told you already how you can come into ownership. Paying funeral expenses gives you no rights. I have people come into my office and say, I was the one who buried him. That was nice of you. <laughs> yes, very nice. But his land does not belong to you by virtue of that. You would have had to have bought it. You would have had to have given it to you as a gift or you have to inherit it. Or if you're coming back with a different possession story. I was the one who used to take care of him. He was sick for how long? And the children stayed for him. And if it wasn't for me, Jankra would have drive out of there. <laughs> Gives you no rights. The daughter can come from England having not come and having neglected the parent and the landowner. Uh, you can even come after the funeral and the property can fall to them under inheritance. You who were here, the cousin or the whatever, or just a nice neighbor taking care has no rights. I was the one who was, the, was supporting. I supported the parents. I was the one. I took them to hospital. I was the one who brought the grocery. They were living with me. Gives you no rights. Firstborn. And some men come and say, me is the first son. So I am supposed to have the same. Gives you no rights. The other thing that gives you no rights is word of mouth. So when somebody speak and say, you know, I'm giving you this, I point, I'm giving you the piece of land from, start from the ackee tree, down to the gully side and come back around to the breadfruit tree, it's for you. And when we cross over the bamboo, there's a go on, it's for your son John. That gives you no rights. You cannot give land rights by word of mouth. Everything must be in black and white. You purchase it, you have your paperwork, you get it as a gift, you have your paperwork, you inherited it by a will, or you inherit it by law, unless you are claiming to be owner by virtue of possession. With me so far? Yes. yes. So we're going to bear all these things in mind as we get ready to embrace what it is that we are visioning for ourselves as landowners, proprietors, big word, registered proprietors in the new development that we are contemplating. With me? Yes. Now, we're going to talk now about the leases. Somebody asked me quite recently, so what is the difference between if you lease and if you rent? You know, in the law, is this the same thing? Is the same set of rights? The only difference is a lease is usually for a fixed long term. Whereas a rent is a month to month rent. So a lease could be for a lease for six months. You know, you can lease land or you can lease building. There are people who think you can only lease land. You can lease land and you can lease house and you can lease shop. 
The difference between lease and tenants is usually when you say you are leasing is for a fixed period of time and, the, and your lease come to an end when the fixed period comes to an end. Whether it is six months, one year, five years, ten years. And do you know there are 99 year leases? Yes. I did one recently. A lease for 99 years. So for as long as you live, you are in full, you're like an owner. Water Commission give you your own meter now. Because a 99 year lease is almost like a sale. You're like an owner. Okay? So, to have a lease or in a tenancy agreement, it is best to have it in writing. It is always the best. And through this program, those persons who are leasing will get an opportunity to regularize their leasing situation. Regularize will mean to get it right. To get it right. But for that, what are we going to need? We're going to have to find a true owner. So that is where your work begins, with your research to find the true owner. The true owner if found, may want to improve their title to the fancy one with a coat of arms. They might want to sell it to you. Yes? Or they might just want to document and formalize, give you a proper lease document. That document you can hold up as your right to occupy so that when the relative get dip dip and arrive and show up and oh yeah, do yeah, come out you can hold up your paper and you and him can go to the court or to the police station to say see I have a right to be here you are with me? Yes. The main thing about the lease is to identify, just like you can't buy land from the person who doesn't really own it, you can't lease land from the person who does not really own it. And if you find that you are in possession of land and nobody shows up, you, are, you, don't, you have never heard of the owner, never seen the owner, or the owner left and went to England or wherever or from. However long has not come back to say anything I already told you, what can work for you? Not stressing it, because people will say, you know, a lady named Miss Campbell went over to Portmore, went over to Nagahead and tell people to keep other people's land. And I don't want that. But you understand my context. You understand what I'm saying? Read between the lines, but find the landowner because we are going to need that person to assist you in formalizing. Now they have someone that do rights over land and I'm just going to say, tell you in few quick sentences because I don't like to start anything that's on my paper and don't finish. Mortgage, you know what a mortgage is? Yeah. Yes, that's another right you can give to somebody over your land. They give you money and you give them a right over your land. And what is that right called? Mortgage, they lend you. They lend you the money and you give them a right over your land. That is, a, that is an interest they have in your land now, which is a mortgage like housing trust, yes, credit union, and so on. There are some other little rights that you can give over your land. You give a little man the right to catch on the front page of the land to sell his fruits and vegetables. That is called a license. A license to be there. So he has permission to be there. And since we're in law school right here and now, if you have one of those arrangements for yourself, it is good to have a little paper to say, 
what I am giving you is a license to be there. Because you don't want when your back turn. So then if that person take over and the next thing you hear is that that person saying they own the place by the virtue of being there for how long and how long. Right? You with me? Yeah. License. You give them a right to operate a little stall or a shed. Then you have other things like some big word like easement and so on. So when JPS come or when Digicel comes and say they want a piece of your land to put down the pole and they ask your permission, that is called an easement. But don't worry your head about that yet. It's just on the paper, so I'm mentioning it. But for you, your main focus will be on getting right your ownership, getting your ownership documentation together so that when things start to move, you are in a position to move with the progress. That's all I have to share with you. And I'll be around a part of the team to assist in getting you to where you want to be. I've seen it happen in other communities. I've seen how it changes lives. And I know it can also happen in Nagahe. We're going to need full cooperation from everybody. When I say full cooperation, is the boundaries has to be agreed upon. Because if the boundaries are between you and your neighbor, if you agree that this is your bound and your neighbor doesn't agree, we're not going to make any progress. Just not going to make any progress. So what we're going to need is full cooperation, agreement, and all of that. Once we have full cooperation, the team can come through, document, set the bond effects for each and every body piece of the property. Like I said, the most important thing that we need is cooperation. Once we have cooperation, that means we have agreement. Once we have the agreement, then we can proceed. So, all the marks and pockets, everybody cooperation so that we can proceed with the survey, get those surveys done, get the plan submitted to the national land agents, get them approved, and then they will go over to the typing agency. So all of that will be done. But without having the survey done, we're not gonna get anywhere with the type, and we need to get to that point. Because we all know now, all the good benefits of having a registered that. So I don't really have much to say than that. Just ask for everybody cooperation so we can move quickly in a very progressive order. All right, thanks. To the land survey, to reiterate what Mr. Mahan said, we want full cooperation from everybody when the land survey comes around. He's going to pick out the boundaries as they are on ground, so you'll be responsible. You have a big responsibility to show him where those boundaries are. And again, we need cooperation. So everybody and their neighbor needs to start to get together and agree on where the surveyor should put the marks when he comes. But more importantly, the surveys will start on June the 5th. Persons who live on Casino Drive would have already gotten survey notices in the mail or hand delivered to you. So around June the 5th, so the end of that week, the survey will be in that area and then we'll send out notices for the other section of Nagahead where he'll start next. Now the survey will be in the entire community from June 5th to the end of June. So look out and look out for the notices, all right? And the survey would like to make one more comment, so hold your applause just one second for me. Yeah, just pay attention to the notices because whatever documentation that you have for, the, for your property, it will be good for you to be present at that time of the survey with it. So, the survey, so we can take a look at it and uh, can get pertinent information from those documents. All right. Um, and you have somebody over there just took the words right out of my mouth. Now, Habitat for Humanity in Building Resilience and Capacities Against Emerging Disasters realized that in Nagahead we'd have to do some give and take. 
So you would have to give a little and we would have to give a little. And what we are willing to give is a survey cost for free. The survey cost is usually quite expensive because it can run you about forty to fifty thousand dollars depending on the size of your parcel and that's the base cost. So when you go up into big pieces of land, we're running into the hundred thousands and those kinds of figures. But Habitat for Humanity will be putting the entire survey cost. And what happens is that you'll have that survey diagram in your hand to make any transactions thereafter. All right? So round of applause for Habitat for Humanity. Yes, and Ms. Denrose Campbell, our land lawyer, who has been so gracious this evening with so much good information, has some more information to share with you. Just one quick thing that I want to say. As I told you, I have worked before in communities like this that were trying to get passes regularized. And there were some persons who were left out and left behind and did not get to benefit from the survey. Why? Because they spent time squabbling about one little piece of land. As I would say, not even Google peas can grow there. So give up a little piece. It doesn't matter. The, the neighbor is saying, no, it must go so you are saying, no, the boundary is here. Just come to a compromise because guess what? An opportunity like this, free land survey is not coming your way again. Thank you. Good afternoon. Or good night. Um, I really don't have much more to say because Cena Council really touched the bases. And I thank you, Ms. Campbell, for doing so. Now, in relation to LAMP and getting your title, as the survey has said, you all need a survey back. So if it is that persons are going to be fighting and fussing and their property will remain unadjudicated, their parcel remains unadjudicated or it's not surveyed, then when we reach the titling stage, you will be left behind. And that is just how it will be. Now, quite importantly, whilst we had opening comments and remarks, I, the question was raised as to persons who have documentation for their land. And I didn't see many hands going up. So what this will mean is that upon the properties being surveyed and the lamp being forwarded, a copy of the diagrams, we will have to speak to the landowners, assess the property or the, the, the general community to see how best we can proceed. Because there might be situations where there are existing titles, we'll see what route is best, or what option is best. Um, where there are no titles, then we will have to proceed to register. Where there are issues as it relates to ownership, then LAMP has adjudication committees that we will set up in the area. Um, it will include a land surveyor, an attorney at law, a committee representative, a minister's rep, and a justice of the peace. We will be in the area, we will have adjudication hearing, the community will be invited, and persons who appear before the committee will present their information or evidence, and in the presence of the committee members. And if it is that, there are objections. They will be had there and then. If there are no objections, then what will happen is that you will get a record of decision and that will go, will go far away in aiding the titling process. Now, the important thing to observe is, I, I, I can't stress this, too much. If you don't have a diagram in relation to the project, you don't stand a chance. So, and when I say diagram, we are referring to survey diagram. So it's very important that you all cooperate with the Commission Land Survey. Because if I don't have a survey diagram, I am not able to say 
where your boundary lie. How much land are you in possession of? If I'm going to be registering your land, I have to know how much land you have. If I'm going to be doing part of land transfers, and let me just break it down a bit. You were shown a registered title earlier. You all recall? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, if it is that the property you're occupying is part of a land, is 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 already titled. Say it as simple as possible. If the land that you're occupying already has a title and the registered owner is alive, what we might opt to do is part of land transfers. So if we're doing part of land transfers, we have to know your part or the neighbor's part for us to transfer. And thus the survey diagram is of critical importance. Where there are doubts as to how the ownership of the land um, or to satisfy ownership of the land, then we bring in the adjudication committees. Titling for land is relatively cheap, I could say that, relatively cheap, and it is based primarily on the unimproved value of the land, which is on your tax receipt. All parcels, all the, all the lands that we'll seek to register, you must have a tax receipt. The taxes must be up to date for us to move the applications forward. So, on a whole, your total cooperation will be needed. There might be a stage when, there will be a stage when land officers will visit your community or will invite you to a central location. And we expect you to come to us, giving us the information that we require, telling us the truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. 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 So we need the truth. Now, further to that, for a lamp to operate in, in Nagahead, we need, you need certain government activities. And we have already commenced the declaration, or commenced the process for Nagaheads to be declared a lamp here. So once it is, once we receive the formalities, then the benefits that the general lamp applicants or clients receive, the same benefit will be to you. Clear? So we don't want to declare the area lamp area and then you are not cooperating. That would make us very sad because a lot of work has gone into what we are doing and what Habitat for Humanity has done thus far and you all witness the passion with, with, with which, with which, Senior Council spoke. So we want your full cooperation, we want your neighbor um, to cooperate, we want you to show love and affection for each other, and unitedly we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Service, custom, and absorbed by you people, what about the lawyer's fee? <laughs> Alright, the lawyer's fee is some is the reason why LAMP is here now. Because remember, we said that we're doing a special thing for Nagahe to declare the area, a LAMP area. Now, usually the lawyer's fee is how much we stumble in the hundreds of thousands, even more expensive than the land surveyors. If you are 200, 300, or 500 thousand, when you start getting to the nitty gritty of who dead and never leave no will, and you have 10 children and you want to sort out which child must get what, it runs a lot of money. On the lamp, the costs are significantly reduced, and not only that, Habitat for Humanity will be absorbing most of the tightening costs. So, all we're asking you to do is please to pay the legal land taxes. All right? Um, our family, uh, we have a piece of land further down the lane. Uh, my dad, Canadair, he's the, um, we, well, we actually got, after a long battle, the title sorted out. However, the will was, that was left was for two splits by my dad and another aunt. Uh, we got the title, but how do we go about getting a split title? Because I think if the land needs to split in two, we have one title with both names, but I think the issue is the you're going to begin when the survey comes. When the survey comes, you discuss exactly how you want that done. And when you have the survey, it is surveyed already. Okay. 
it shows to me like once the area is declared, a lamp area, once that process is complete and you are told, then the arrangement can it can all be done through lamp. The lamp Land Administration and Management Program, that office has six dedicated attorneys who will be there to assist with all the title matters.